From the middle of the 18th century onwards, the Ottomans began their long and gradual decline that saw them labelled as the sick man of Europe. The state would go on to embrace military and administrative reforms, but these proved too little too late. After the Ottoman government's failed attempt to reclaim its former glory by joining the First World War, the empire would be split up by the Allied powers. Standing in their way, however, was the Turkish National Movement, led by Mustafa Kemal, a name that would go down in history. With some viewing him as a hero, whilst others see him as a traitor. Before he led his forces to victory in the Turkish War of Independence, and before his efforts in establishing an independent Turkey earned him the name Ataturk, father of the Turks, we must look at his early years of formal education, military training and political activity to understand what formed someone who would go on to become a legend of modern history. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk was born in 1881 in present-day Thessaloniki, Greece. Known as Selanik to the Turks, it would remain under Ottoman rule until 1912. The city had a significant Ladino-speaking Jewish population, and this would later fuel his Islamist foes to allege that his ancestors were Jewish converts to Islam, and he himself was in fact a Donmeh, a crypto-Jew. Mustafa's father, Ali Reza Efendi, had served in the military and later became a lumber trader, whilst his mother, Zubayde Hanim, came from a farming background. Mustafa's ethnic origins have been the subject of intense scrutiny as his parents' backgrounds are difficult to pinpoint. Whilst his mother was most likely of Turkish descent, his father has variously been labelled as Albanian, Slavic and Turkish. At Mustafa's birth, Ali Reza hung his sword over his cradle, foreshadowing his son's military career. Once of age, his father decided to send him to a secular school, despite his wife's appeals to send him to a madrasa instead. This decision likely contributed to having a profound impact on Mustafa later on, and he would be forever grateful to his father for this. Tragedy would soon hit the household, as Ali Reza passed away when Mustafa was just seven years old. The young child would continue his secular education in Selenik in the hope of joining the Ottoman bureaucracy, which had undergone somewhat of a Western transformation through the Tanzimat reforms of the 19th century. Strong-minded and independent even at an early age, Mustafa decided to follow in his father's footsteps and took an entrance exam to join the local military school. It was while at this school that he got the nickname Kemal, the perfect one, due to the impression he made as a good student in his mathematics classes. In 1895, he moved to a military school in what is now Bitola, North Macedonia, where he made friends with Ali Fethi Okyar, who would later help him in his future political career. After finishing military school, Mustafa enrolled in the War College in Istanbul in 1899. The college was a hotbed of political activism against the ruling Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Although not initially involved in political activity, he was eventually introduced to dissident thought which later became known to the authorities, but he was still allowed to finish his course and graduate as a second lieutenant in 1902 and was among the top in his class. When he graduated from the General Staff College in 1905 as a captain, Mustafa had been in military education for over a decade. Not even 25 years old, the young man was now ready to go out into the real world and make a name for himself. Despite being highly accomplished academically, Mustafa's past of political activism would soon catch up with him, as he was informed upon by an Ottoman spy when he discussed the Sultan's political repression. 
sent to Damascus with the 5th army to keep him away from the capital, he soon grew angry at how the local people were treated by the authorities. In this time, he joined the secret revolutionary group Vatan Vahuryat, Fatherland and Liberty, with a few of his fellow reformist army officers. A few years later, he was stationed in his hometown of Selenik where he resumed his political activism by joining the CUP, the Committee of Union and Progress, which was spearheading the Young Turk movement that opposed Sultan Abdul Hamid's government. The next year in 1908, the Young Turks revolution took place and ushered in an era of constitutional monarchy with a representative government that had initially been enacted in the 1876 Ottoman constitution. Enver Pasha became a leading figure in the movement. He would later emerge as a rival to Mustafa Kemal, whose role in the Young Turks was not so prominent. In 1909, there was further political turmoil when an attempted counter-revolution took place, led by both Islamists who opposed the secularism of the CUP and the Ottoman Liberal Party, which disagreed with the absolutism of the CUP. The uprising was crushed and Abdul Hamid II was forced to abdicate as Ottoman Sultan. This further cemented Enver's political credentials, which troubled Mustafa as he felt that the military shouldn't interfere in politics. In 1911, Italy invaded Ottoman Libya and Mustafa saw a chance to prove himself. Travelling there in disguise with other officers, he distinguished himself on the battlefield despite the Ottomans coming out on the losing end. He even received a wound to his left eye from the debris of a nearby building. When the first Balkan war broke out in October 1912, Mustafa was sent to the Gallipoli Peninsula to defend the Dardanelles Islands. The Ottomans would lose this war as well, losing much of its Balkan territories, including his hometown Selenik to Greece. Mustafa's mother and sister would then join him in Istanbul. The following year saw the outbreak of the Second Balkan War, where the Ottomans regained Eastern Thrace from Bulgaria. After the conclusion of hostilities, Mustafa would join his former classmate Ali Fethi Okyar in Sofia after the latter was appointed ambassador to Bulgaria, whilst he himself would be promoted to lieutenant colonel and served as part of the military attaché there. In Sofia, he fell in love with Demetrina Kovacheva, the daughter of the Bulgarian general he had fought during the Balkan Wars. He asked his former foe for permission to marry his daughter twice, but was rejected both times, apparently leaving Mustafa deeply hurt. In the summer of 1914, the First World War erupted in Europe and the Ottomans joined the side of the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians. Mustafa was given command of the 19th Ottoman Division which was stationed in the Gallipoli Peninsula. Having prior experience in this region from the First Balkan War, he put this to good use when he defeated the Allied Powers campaign to capture the peninsula in 1915. Victory at Gallipoli made Mustafa a national hero and he was promoted to colonel. Subsequently, he was sent to the Russian front where he was given command of the 16th Corps and later the Ottoman 2nd Army in the Caucasus Front. In August 1916, Mustafa mounted a successful counter-offensive against the Russian army where he recaptured Bitlis and Mus from the Russian Empire. The Russian army would later withdraw in March 1917 after Tsar Nicholas II was overthrown in the Russian Revolution. It was whilst fighting the Russians that Mustafa would meet his future right-hand man and successor, Ismet Inonu. His exploits were rewarded when he reached the rank of general and was given the title of Pasha. His military prowess and achievements had made him invaluable for the Ottoman High Command, who re-stationed him in Syria in order to repel the British advance from Egypt. Given command of the 7th Army, Mustafa was shocked by the state of the army defending the province. So he wrote a report to Grand Vizier Talat Pasha regarding the dismal situation. But his observations were ignored, 
leading him to resign his post. In 1918, he was then tasked with accompanying the Crown Prince Mehmet Vahiyuddin to Germany, where after surveying the German lines on the Western Front, he concluded that the Central Powers would soon lose the war. On the return trip of the diplomatic visit, he received medical treatment in Austria for recurring physical problems, including ones that related to his kidney which would go on to afflict him for many years. When the Crown Prince Mehmet ascended the throne in July of that year, he called upon Mustafa Kemal to once again take command of the 7th Army in Palestine. Seeing that the situation was hopeless, he withdrew his men northward towards Anatolia to evade the British from enveloping his forces. The Middle Eastern Front in the First World War came to an end in October 1918 with the signing of the Mudros Armistice. In the end, the three Pashas who led the government throughout the war all fled into exile leaving Sultan Mehmed VI in charge of a state that was forced to cooperate with the Allied powers. The Allied troops immediately entered Istanbul, where they established a military administration, marking the first time since 1453 that control of the city changed hands. This occupation of their territory and the subsequent Allied plans to partition Anatolia between them helped provide the spark for the Turkish national movement which was determined to expel the foreign powers. It was in the subsequent Turkish War of Independence that through his leadership of the nationalist resistance movement, Mustafa Kemal would become Ataturk, father of the Turks. Thank you guys for watching, this video is part of Project Dictator a multi-channel collab with other channels focusing on various dictators around the world. Make sure you check out the other videos in the playlist. Also, if you don't know by now, I have another channel which is all about street food, so if you're interested in that, I'd love your support on that as well. I can't forget to thank my patrons for their continued support. And last but not least, I want to thank my friend Azim for his help on this script. I couldn't have done this without him. Keep your eyes peeled for part 2 of this video which will be dropping next week. Until next time, peace!